Today's conversation is on brainwashing. Now, over the years, there have been many discussions on the topic of brainwashing, such as how does the individual know if they have been brainwashed? And number two, how does the individual consciously brainwash themselves to get what they want in life? Now, based on my over 20 years of research and study and working with people who claim to be brainwashed and also those that have consciously brainwashed themselves to get what they want in life, I would like to share with you some information that I have never seen discussed anywhere. Firstly, consider this. The world that appears appears to be sort of like a mirror as articulated in the book Reality Transurfing under the mirror principle. Is this true? And if so, to what degree is it true? The answer may surprise you. And what does this got to do with brainwashing? Let's explore. I titled today's conversation mind map, Think Only From the premise of truth. Today's conversation was also inspired by this quote here from Emmett Fox from the Sermon on the Mount. He says, They are the pure in heart. Purity, in its full and complete sense, is recognizing God alone as the only real cause, and the only real power in existence. It is what is called somewhere in the sermon, the single I. The single I. Note that Jesus speaks of the pure in heart. The word heart in the Bible usually means that part of our mentality that modern psychology knows under the name of the subconscious mind. This is exceedingly important because it is not sufficient for us to accept the truth with the conscious mind only. At that stage, it is still a mere opinion. It is not until it is accepted by the subconscious mind and thus assimilated into the whole mentality that it can make any difference in one's character or life. So, the next section here I titled Releasing the Illusions of I. As we've been discussing, True nature is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Anything else is untrue, unreal. Now, the individual may not have realized this as they were forming beliefs. These beliefs play out as theater in, on, and as the outer appearances of life, in relationships, in their career, in their business, day-to-day -day life, these beliefs play out as theater to reveal what has been identified with, the beliefs that are stored in the subconscious mind, which again, the Bible refers to as the heart. So, pure of heart refers to a subconscious mind that has been free from identification to untrue beliefs, which are not from the premise of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. These untrue beliefs generate untrue thinking in mind, the mental chatter, which the individual may identify with, further generating more illusions in their life. A lot of times these beliefs are formed through the perception of authoritative figures. As William Walker Atkinson had discussed in his book, 
suggestion and autosuggestion. There is one class of suggestion that he refers to as suggestion by authority. He says, suggestion by authority manifests both in the positive authoritative statements directed to the point and also by the spoken or written statements made by those who speak or write with an air of authority. Now let's explore this. Because who determines if the individual that we are listening to is authoritative on a subject? Only we do. It is an illusion to think otherwise. Because only I am aware of what I relate to appearances, which includes people, environment, circumstance, and information. Today we're speaking specifically about information. And I would like to relate this over to the 14 language patterns from a wonderful book called Slight of Mouth by Robert Diltz, Slight of Mouth, The Magic of Conversational Belief Change. So, it doesn't matter what I say to you or what anyone says to you. It is what you relate to the words, to what is being communicated, whether it be verbal or nonverbal, that determines what appears next, as in, do you allow thinking that is not from the premise of truth to form a false identity construct, as we discussed in Tuesday's video, which I'll link to in the description? Or do you relate ideally to that information from the premise of truth, knowing that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. And as I, the single I, have been created in the perfect image of the Creator, foundational reality, God, which God is, as we've been discussing in our discussions of Lessons in Truth by H. Emily Cady. I'll link in the description to our discussions thus far. God is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. If the individual thinks otherwise, that would be illusions of separation, an inharmonious relationship with God, which we discussed also in Sunday's video. I'll link in the description to it. So, if an individual appears, parents, teachers, you name it, information presented on the news, friends, family, it is what you relate to the information, the words that they present that determines what they mean. To think otherwise would not make any sense because even as you are listening to me communicate or watching this presentation on YouTube, you are relating to what I appear to say. That's why I titled this section here, Perceived Authority. It is the individual that determines this person is authoritative, this other person is not authoritative. Now, an individual might not be aware of this, so they might be relating to information, what a person says, not from the premise of truth. Let's take a very direct statement. If someone says, you will never be successful doing it your way. Is that really true? See, if a person does not think for themselves, they may relate to that as a statement of never being successful doing it their way building their business their way, enjoying their relationships their way, living their life their way, even though they know certainly that it is how they truly desire to experience their relationship with their business or their friends. 
or their romantic partner. You name it. So we know this is clearly untrue. So now if you come across any information that appears to deny the fact that you are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. It is untrue. You know clearly now, I am aware of what I relate to appearances. It is untrue. Now, one of the ways that we can release identification, and by that I mean releasing the illusions of I, the illusions of separation from truth, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, releasing the untrue beliefs that, again, stored in the subconscious mind, which, again, the word heart in the Bible usually means that part of the individual's mentality that modern psychology knows under the name of the subconscious mind. So, blessed are the pure of heart is referring to those that have released identification to the illusions of I, the untrue of I, the untrue beliefs of I, the unreal identifications of I, so that they can operate automatically from truth. And by that I mean their attention automatically appears to go in the direction that is true and authentic. And thus, they are living how they truly desire to live. And they live in spirit of harmony with all. So, let's look at the statement here. You will never be successful doing it your way. Here are 14 language patterns from the book. Again, it's called Slight of Mouth by Robert Diltz. A lot of times, these language patterns are used in consulting or coaching, leadership, and mentorship to facilitate releasing identification of the illusions of I so that the individual can live how they truly desire to live and operate in a spirit of harmony with all, which is what they truly desire. We can also, via self-talk, we can talk to ourselves in a way that if information is presented, like a statement like this, for example, will be presented, you are aware of if you are about to react to something. So let's say the statement was presented. If you notice emotional tension or if you think thoughts of doubt in relation to your ability, perhaps there's identification because if there was no reactivity, if we could say that never phased you honestly, then there is no identification. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. They shall see love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, in, on, and as the outer appearances of life, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as far as the senses perceive. Yet if the identification is there, no shame, no condemnation, one or two or a few or running through the course of these language patterns will facilitate the release of the identification, release of the illusions of I, release identification to the untrue belief that is stored in the subconscious mind, the subconscious aspect of mind, from which the individual thinks inaccurately from, and they believe themselves to be that belief. They might even say, this is just the way that I am which is clearly untrue, as I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I am is God's name. Thus, any association to I am that is not from the premise of truth, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, is untrue, as we discussed in our recent Neville Goddard conversation. I'll link in the description to it. So, let's run through these language patterns as an example of the kind of communication that you can have with yourself or you can also facilitate this in your relationships and also someone that you trust can facilitate this for you as well. 
Number one is intent. Identify the positive intention behind the belief or behavior. Again, the statement was, you will never be successful doing it your way. So the example would be, I understand that they are indicating exploring the various ways from the infinite ways to be successful. Again, we are going beyond the surface level to see the person from the premise of truth. And you can say, and I appreciate their opinions of success. I also know it is beneficial for them to witness another way of actualizing success. So these language patterns are set up in a way to not trigger the beliefs. This is what I refer to as artful auto-suggestion or artful self-talk. It is conversation, self-talk, auto-suggestion, which can also be, as mentioned, done with another person, that facilitates the release of the illusions of I, the untrue beliefs stored in the subconscious aspect of mind, without triggering them, without generating resistance. Now, these are examples that I put together for today's conversation. Yet, when I do this with an individual, I adjust my communication accordingly. Because there is no need to trigger a belief that is untrue, which can generate a fight, flight, or freeze response. The key with these language patterns is to communicate in a way that will release identification to the untrue belief so that the change has been initiated and they get to live the life that they truly desire to live. And as mentioned, we're applying this today as self-talk. We can do this with ourselves. Number two, redefine. Change the meaning of the words used. So in relation to our example, Success means different things to different people. For me, success is also about continuous growth and learning, which I am constantly manifesting. So if a statement like this is witnessed, you will never be successful doing it your way. It is not taken in a way that forms identification to untrue beliefs. And if there was reactivity in relation to that appearance, this kind of language pattern facilitates releasing identification to that untrue belief that is generating the emotional resistance to that particular statement. Number three, consequence. Explore the consequences of the belief or behavior. So an example would be, if I believe that I'll never be successful, I'll limit my potential. And the reality is my potential is infinite, as I have been created in the perfect image of the creator. You have been created in the perfect image of the creator. So what I like to do with the slight amount language patterns is to relate them over to spiritual truth. The fact that you are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, unconditionally. You exist truly beyond these conditions. Where do these conditions exist if they exist? They can only exist in the subconscious aspect of mind. You may consciously place in the subconscious aspect of mind what you truly desire to experience. And that's Play out that theater. Wonderful loving relationships, wonderful entrepreneurship, wonderful entrepreneurship success, and also a flow-based journey. One of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, in, on, and as the bridge of incidents to manifesting that prosperity, which is your true nature. So the example, if I believe that I'll never be successful, I'll limit my potential, and the reality is my potential is infinite. Instead, I'll choose to focus on my strengths and continue to manifest my vision. Number four is chunking up. This is where we generalize the belief to a higher level. For example, what really matters is living a life aligned with truth, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and prosperity. 
successes are physical manifestations of the big picture. Then we have chunking down. Chunking down is specify the belief to a more detail level so that we can actually see clearly that it is untrue. Shine the light on that belief to see that it is untrue in an area that the individual might not have seen that it was untrue before. For example, I wonder what specific aspect of success they appear to be referring to. So a key is to not shame or condemn yourself, the other person, is to be neutral. And by that I mean the unconditionally loving, blissful, happiness, peace, fulfilled being, witness, as we discussed again in Sunday's video, I of God, I and I am are one. I witness God, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. So I wonder what specific aspect of success they appear to be referring to. They appear to be referring to. So untrue beliefs, why do they appear? The way I like to relate to that is they appear to disappear. They don't appear to persist. They appear to disappear. They appear to disappear. So I am equals love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and prosperity unconditionally. And thus everything else is unreal and appears to disappear. So we're dissolving the untrue beliefs and thus the appearances, the outer appearances of a person's life changes to appear from the premise of truth. So the example, I wonder what specific aspect of success they appear to be referring to. I have manifested many successes and continue to do so. Number six is metaphor analogy. Here's where we can use a metaphor or analogy to reframe the belief, thus releasing identification to it. Example, success is like a garden. I am nurturing my garden every day. Even if the fruits have not appeared yet, I rest assured that they surely do. So you may notice that the way I like to do it is the communication style is more poetic, more artful, with intention. It is designed to not trigger the identification. It is designed to not trigger the belief, the fight, flight, or freeze response. Rather, slip the suggestion into the subconscious mind without resistance to release identification to these beliefs. When I do this, I feel no resistance. And you and I are no different. You can do the same. You can learn how to communicate with yourself where you listen to yourself and trust yourself in a way that releases the identifications, the illusions of I. And one time thou shalt decree a thing and it shall come to pass. One time you can speak to yourself in a way that releases those untrue beliefs. You get better at it with practice. And this is a great book to start this practice with. So the example again, success is like a garden. I am nurturing my garden every day. Even if the fruits have not appeared yet, I rest assured that they surely do. Number seven, another outcome. Suggest a different outcome that could be equally valid. Example. Instead of focusing on never, I choose to see every perceived challenge as an opportunity for learning. And I also know that challenges inspire flow. And it is from the perspective I perceive challenges that determines what I think and how I emotionally relate to perceived challenges. Number eight, counterexample. So this is where we provide an example that contradicts the belief. Again, we do it in a way that is artful. Example, I remember when I successfully completed that project which I may have perceived as challenging. That clearly demonstrated my capability to succeed and shift perspective, which is a mark of a successful person. 
Then we have hierarchy of criteria. Here's where we shift the focus to higher criterion or value, similar to chunking up. So an example would be, what's most important to me is living a fulfilling life. Acknowledging, again, I am fulfilled. What's most important to me is living a fulfilling life. And I am already doing that. 10. Apply to self. Here's where we apply the belief to the person holding it. Or we can say we question what appears to be suggested. Example. Do they think that never being successful applies to them as well? Everyone has the potential for success. So this is where we don't shame or condemn the other person, but rather we question that belief and then acknowledge that everyone, including them, has the potential for success. The goal of the sleight of mouth language patterns when done in this way that we discuss is to release the illusions of I and not reform the false identity construct, which the Bible refers to it as the old man, in a way that generates even more illusions through band-aid solution-based beliefs. What I recommend is going right to the truth and thinking ideally in relation to appearances from the truth, knowing that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. Next is change frame size. Change the perspective by zooming in or out. Example, in the grand scheme of life, what matters is the journey and the destination. Each step I take is part of my success story. Number 12, model of the world. This challenges the belief by considering different perspectives. For example, from my perspective, success is a personal journey. What works for one person might be different for another. So we see clearly then when we look at the statement, you will never be successful doing it your way. There is absolutely no reactivity to the statement anymore because we see clearly, we've questioned it, we've seen it from many different perspectives, and it clearly has no ability to persuade you as it never did. Because as mentioned earlier, it is only what I relate to appearances. And as I am aware of what I relate to appearances, I discern if it's from the premise of truth or not. And if it is untrue, I release that identification. And as those identifications are released, you operate from the single I, the I of God. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. Your attention automatically appears to go in a direction which we could say is ideal, actualizing more and more prosperity. If you like the alchemist way of saying it, everything you touch turns to gold. Number 13 is reality strategy. Here's where we can question how the belief is constructed in reality. For example, I wonder how they measure success. By my standards, I always make significant progress every day. Number 14, positive intention. Identify and validate the positive intention behind the belief. Example, this may be their way of trying to protect me from disappointment. However, I believe in my ability to manifest my success through my ways. So again, going back to the beginning here, as Emmett Fox stated, they are the pure in heart. So self-talk, from the premise of truth, using certain language patterns like this is powerful for releasing identification to untrue beliefs, which were formed by the individual unknowingly. For example, it could be through what the individual considers to be perceived authoritative figures. Who determines that? Only the individual does. As William Walker Atkinson articulated, Suggestion by authority manifests both in the positive authoritative statements directed to the point and also by the spoken or written statements made by those who speak or write with an air of authority. So through practicing what I share 
in this video with you. From personal experience, it became so crystal clear and precise. Anytime any information is presented to me, any information, it could be a person communicating to me, information on the news, information on a website, videos, etc. It is crystal clear what I relate to that information. And if it appears to be not from the premise of truth, I release the identification through this kind of self-talk. And then what happens is your attention no longer appears to be directed by information. You could say you remain on course. And this is what we all inevitably end up doing. From truth we arise and truth we return to and live from. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I realize that I am aware of what I relate to appearances and I relate ideally from the premise of truth, allowing my attention to remain on what is related to my vision. More and more so each moment, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. And as a result of knowing that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, attention automatically appears to focus on what is related to my vision. People, environment, circumstance, information appear to be supportive in a mutually harmonious way towards my vision, manifesting heaven on earth in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as far as the senses perceive. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.